So as you surely know, in, in physics, we speak of this thing called entropy, where left to itself, a system will always degrade to uh, lowest energy, highest disorder. And the key is left to itself. Yes, yes. So we can create any manner of complexity on Earth because we're not a closed system. We're open to the sun. So the right. sun is gaining entropy by helping us out. Eventually, it's going to die and nothing's going to help it. Right. 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 So do you guys in molecular biology think of, of oh, entropy? Th there's no question that uh, entropic forces exist. Of course, living systems all use external energy to keep it alive. Yes. Right. And part of the energy is used to do this maintenance and repair of the damage. But it never it's not perfect. And so eventually, even if you keep repairing DNA damage, repairing cells, getting rid of defective cells, yeah. all of that stuff which takes energy, it's not perfect, and eventually the system uh, gradually decays. I, I, but it means it decays at different rates for different species. Interesting, and or different parts, different systems, even within your own body. Oh, uh, that's uh, something that you that very interesting. So, if you were to people were to analyze your different organs, they'd find that they they all had different ages. Yes. To to say someone's biological age is a number. Different ages mean a different time distance from its birth to its death. Correct. Right, because obviously it's all uh, yeah. uh, physically the same age. Yeah, physically, yeah, yeah. The, chronologi biologi chronologically right. it's the same age. Yes, yeah. but, okay. physiologically, but physiologically, physiologically there are different yeah. ages. So that's, but it doesn't make a difference because uh, if I got an old heart and a young pancreas, I'm still going to die. By, with by a heart with, issue. With by a heart yes. issue. So that was always what I suspected, that yeah. people who live very long, all of their organs somehow are aging at the same rate, physiologically. Well, I'm not. I, I don't know if that's true, but maybe uh, they're still aging differently. But the the lead organ, the organ that's aging fastest, is is still slower than other people. That, okay. Right, right, right. They, if they die, it's not going to be from that. So, given what you just said, it, it I didn't put two and two together here until just now. In the second law of thermodynamics, uh, one of its stipulations is if you have sort of usable energy over here, and you convert it into another kind of energy over here. There's always energy losses, always. That's why you cannot make a perpetual motion machine. Right. All right. And so, uh, the body is all about converting energy of one kind into another. You have chemical energy in food, and you turn it into sort TP. Of, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, re remind us about that. We all learned it in biology class. The ATP cycle is that right? There's uh, ATP is adenosine triphosphate. It's a high energy. It's a molecule with high energy bonds. So you can think of it as a universal currency, just like uh, we in our world, electricity is a universal currency. So yes. you mm -hmm. use everything converted to electricity, then you can use that for any, everything. And so the body uses it, uh, so you can think of it as a kind of storable form of energy that it can use. Right, but it's taking, energy from one, it's taking energy from one thing and right. converting Typically it to in our thing. in our case we're getting it from carbohydrates. Yes. And by burning carbohydrates. So it's chemical energy. It's chemical energy. Yeah. So that energy is is used to make ATP. Mm -hmm. Got it. And anything else we make in our body to maintain our body temperature because we're warm blooded to move. So yeah so it goes to thermal energy, kinetic energy, yeah. And, and the and like that, and most of those things involve uh, ATP and electrical energy and right for and your brain and, and your heart yeah, yeah, and signaling yeah. and all that. So I'm just saying, every time you convert from one form of energy to another, you're getting less energy than you started with. Right. So right. there is a decay in there. Yeah. Uh, eventually. Interesting. And yeah. So you describe this sort of implicit value of death to a species because it doesn't need you after a certain point of your fertility. Mm. Beyond that, now and we're, we're what we call civilized, mm. and so. There are people who want to do anything they can. <laughs> to, to stay alive for as long as stay, they can. To stay alive for as long as they can. And you're in that business, scientifically. What is the ethics? I, I should say, my that? own lab has never worked on aging. I went from zero to expert in one book. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. My, my lab works on protein synthesis, which is a, a central component 
of aging. Mm. Yes. And I don't actually do aging research myself. Okay, but surely you've thought about the yeah. ethics of it. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Oh, have? definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, so, and I also have no skin in the game, so that's uh, okay. Uh, well, so that any, means we can get a very, uh, a truly objective. Other than beautifully soft skin, right? In the game. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that one. That well, was, yeah, yeah, yeah that's Chuck. A good I don't want to be ahead of you yeah, on any. No, that was a good callback. I like it. <laughs> Chemical laws, biological laws, any in the way to stop us going from where we are now to potential immortality? Right. So there are two issues. One is: is aging programmed? I mean, right, are we right. all programmed to die? Yes. No, because evolution doesn't care okay, about it. Doesn't care about us dying. So there are genes that affect aging, mm. but those genes don't exist in order to make us age. They were selected for some other reason, all right. but they happen to cause us to age. So now that we understand some of the biology of aging, you ask, can we extend that? Yes. And there's no, there are no physical or chemical laws Preventing. that say that we have to die at 120, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, 120 is a, about the record That's for humans. Yeah, right. yeah. Very few reach that. And by the way, whenever you see a 120 year old, they're like, I am ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm they're, not sure. It's like, not, take not me to all, Disney World. Take me now. Not all of them, but yeah. No, there's, there's a woman, Jean, Jean Calmont, who's the record holder at 122. Oh, she was the smoker and drinker. She, was, she used to smoke and drink into, <laughs> into her hundreds. And, the, and Reporters, after a while, used to gather at our house every birthday. And one of them, at one of them, one of the reporters said, well, see you next year, I hope. And you know what she said? What? She said, sure, why not? You look pretty good to me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there's no physical or chemical law that says, you know, at 120, you got to go. Uh, you got to yeah. go. There are species, as I said, that live 700 years, vertebrates. Of course, the question is, can we change our biology to make us live much longer and still keep us humans? You don't want to be a very slow metabolic animal like a Greenland shark. You still want to be oh. human and you still mm -hmm. want, and you want to live much longer. Now, there are people, I would say, at the one end of uh, the anti-aging research community, including perhaps somebody you've had on your show, mm. Uh, who think that it's, it is possible. You can just keep extending life and, and that'll buy you enough time to do more research and you'll extend more life. And we eventually, and, there's a generation that would reach the escape velocity. Exactly. Where the that prolonging is, of your life is one year per year and yeah. then you live forever. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, I'm highly skeptical, as are most scientists in this field, because aging is a is a multifactorial process and to be able to do this in a, way that's safe, that's efficacious, that actually works, I think it's, it's going to be very, very hard. Yeah, Certainly but a, the, the not impossible. The, the Google software that uses AI for folding proteins, which won a Nobel Prize, if, if memory serves, mm. won't that solve all your protein folding problems? No, this is, this is different from, I, I think AI will have a big influence on biology, and maybe one day it will help with uh, things like aging. One day, but, 18 months from now, sometime, <laughs> sometime in the distant the progressing. In the future, distant future well, of AI. Well, what time say, is it? Okay. <laughs> Let's say I, I'm highly skeptical, but there is no physical law. But I'd say there's also no physical or chemical law that says you can't colonize other galaxies or even Mars. Mm. But, and so, uh, want to, you yeah. know, whatever Elon may say, it's not going to happen tomorrow. So mm -hmm. I, I think and I think we should thing. get down here, kind of worked out first. <laughs> yeah, I'm there's sorry, a lot, but there's several yeah. problems. Yeah, why don't we yeah. make this place habitable? All right. So what happens the day we as chiefs escape velocity? What happens to civilization? I, I think before that, a number of things will happen. For example, more people uh, may live to be a hundred, mm -hmm. or, or well into their nineties or early hundreds. That itself will cause a huge shift in society. For example. Fertility rates everywhere are dropping. Dropping, and so what you're going to have is a it's society. It's an aging of the population. Uh, uh, yeah, society mm -hmm. where there's very little turnover. Same people are living longer and longer. Very very slow turnover. Mm -hmm. To me, that means a less dynamic, a less vibrant society. If you look at the history of science mm. or any fields, even literature, people are 
have done their most creative work when they're young. And it's not just True. about physiological age. You're, you're, you're looking at things fresh. Right. You, you're not as opinionated. You, you don't have, you're not dogmatic. Right. And that allows you to think out of the box. You have to convince the old people that they're less useful right. to society. Yeah. How do you well, do that? That's, well, one of the yeah. reasons I'm retiring is because uh, you know, I decided four or five years ago to, cl to close down my lab. It's gonna happen late this year. It's partly because I do believe that when you've had your time, you know, you should step aside and let younger people carry on. Carry on. When Einstein wow. was given the option to be operated on, uh -huh. basically on his deathbed, uh -huh. he said, no, my work is done. My work is done. Yeah, yeah. I would have said, what kind of doctors are you? Save me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.